Hi, this is Adam for Stone Deaf TV, and we have the headliner for Stone Deaf 2019, Mr. Glenn Hughes. Good thank you, Adam. Good, good, good to see you. It's great to see you. And we'd like to thank you on behalf, of course, of Stone Deaf Festival for coming to join us today. Today sees you back in the UK after a couple of weeks off on the road uh, on, on your tour. We're doing a Deep Purple classic live set. Yes. Mm. Very special period in your career. Yes. What are the things that the, the main sort of feels and the sort of, you know, what, what, if you could do it briefly, how do you encapsulate that period for you as a person, as a human? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, in the band, um, when I joined first and David joined six weeks later. Mm -hmm. And of course, then we went to Switzerland and we made more and we wrote those songs at Clearwell Castle. They were coming off a, an album called Who You Think We Are. They had the Machine Head, you know, it's a very big record. So David and I came in as the new boys and um, not thinking too much about it, we just arranged and wrote and performed those songs in Switzerland with the Stones Mobile. Nobody knows before they go in the studio, is this going to be as big as that or is it going to be? We didn't, all, all we knew that the opening track, Burn, could have been a big song. Nobody really knows. You don't know until it gets out. You just don't know. So when it came out, we actually toured before the album came out, like six weeks before, you know, in, in starting in Denmark. You know, and, and we, we played these songs to people that never heard them. And they went, can I say mental? Yeah. They were mental. And David and I, David was getting his bravado on. He was becoming David Coverdale right in front of our eyes. If you look at YouTube footage of, of David before Stormringer, he was forming this David Cordell bravado. I love him, by the way. So much time for David. So Burn was a huge record for rock and roll, and uh, Ian, and David, and John Lord. I think it was a big record. A huge, huge record. Uh, and at this stage in anyone's career, you look sort of retrospective, you look in reflection. But we, we want to talk about now. And you now, yeah, yeah, and your health, and in particular, how do you keep? I mean, I'll give you an example. A guitarist will have a guitar tech, <laughs> right? A drum tech for a drummer. Yeah. How do you look after your voice and yourself? To be very easy, the way I say this. F E A R, fuck everything and run. That word is one word. The other word is L-O-V-E. If I'm in fear, we're fine. If I'm in love, we're good. A good friend of mine, Alan Shearer, we know who he is, mm -hmm. had a conversation at the World Cup last year in Russia when he was taking penalties. He said, if he had one doubt, one fucking doubt, he was going to miss that left corner, he missed it. I walk on that stage, get out of the fucking way, because that's the only time this boy you're talking to has full control with God's help that I will establish all I've been given as a young child. It's the one thing I can do to the fullest of my ability is to sing and sing and fucking sing. And it's the only thing I really know how to do appropriately other than give love to my wife and my family and my fans. It's quite simple. I have a microphone down here. Did you pick that up, Mike? I think he did. I was holding the microphone down here, as David would, but I'm not using it as a penis. No, and in November. In November, I shall sure. have microphone higher up in yes. my mouth. Excellent. But not as a penis. It's a good position. It is. <laughs> it's a vantage point. Yeah. So in November, you're back on time. I am back. Back in the East. Try and stop me from coming back. It's great. Are you looking forward to that talk in particular? I am because of May. I was, I was re <sighs> let's just say I needed to be home. Yeah. I needed to be home. Something I had, I had to have done, with, something with my knees, again, that needed to be taken care of. And if I had not have done it, it would have been diabolical for the rest of the year. Canceling a show for me is not an easy thing, but canceling a UK tour, let's be clear, I am a UK citizen and an American, sorry. But it hurt my feelings. How many letters and how many, and, and by the way, no one said anything bad to me. They want, can you please come back? We got the tour book for November. And I'll be giving it to you. I promise. I love you so much. Everyone in the UK, all over the UK, British Isles, 
Thank you so much. Well, back to the Midlands where it all began for you. Hometown, mechanic in mind. How much of a special place in your heart does the Midlands have in terms of music? And for you, on a personal level. Not many people, unless you're from the Midlands, you're not going to ask that question. No. A scout is not going to ask me that. No. I was born and raised in the pubs across the black country from Warsaw to Wolverhampton to Dudley to Bilston to Sedgley to Cannox to Stafford. As a priest, like at 12 years old, you know, my mum and dad used yeah. to drive me there, you know, all through my teens. It was um, the Hookerlees when I was at, at school, mm -hmm. then called the Intruders, then called the News with a new set of guys. Then the News, I, fed, I joined Finest Keepers because Mel Galley made that possible. They let the bass bear glow and Mel said, can you come and play bass in our band? I was playing guitar. Can you play bass in our band? I said, give me 24 hours, I'll learn it. Yeah. Finest Keepers merged into Trapeze and the rest is history. Superb. Um, it is, I eat. Of course, talking in the Midlands, Bogus specifically in a band, of course, that you have a very close connection with Black Sabbath, holding yeah, a 50 yeah, year yeah, celebration. Yeah, 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 yeah. The home of rock, the home of metal. Yeah, yeah. It's a wonderful, wonderful celebration. Yeah. How important do you feel as a, a, a former member of Black Sabbath, great friends still with the, with the guys, how proud are you of that legacy that that band and, your, and bands, other bands that you've been involved in as well have had as an impact on the UK and the world itself? I think we need to touch on that. Well, here's the deal. I'm, I, know, I mean, I grew up also with John and Robert from Zeppelin. Trapeze open for Sabbath. Look on Google, I think sometime in May of 1970 at the Mayfair, an online kind of event. Sabbath had just come out with the Paranoids, you know what I mean? Yeah. And Trapeze were just starting out, didn't even have an album out. And I kind of befriended Tony, kind of befriended him. He was an edgy boy back then, wasn't he? Tony was kind of shy, but also edgy. Yeah. You, he knows that. I love you, Tom. Cut to the chase, California Jam or Sabbath are going on before Purple. Purple are headlining and Sabbath are going on before. Then it's some gossip for you, okay? It's in my book. I spent all night the night before with Ozzy in my room. We were going mad with the devil's dandruff. And Ozzy and I on that stuff was pretty as well as it can be. No sleep. Okay, we were in our mid twenties. No sleep. We shoved him off. He went on the stage, took his shirt off and threw it away. We went on stage, I had that white immaculate suit that the president of Warner Brothers bought me because he wanted me to have a white suit where black dog is in black and I could be so rosary lights. Yeah. So we no sleep, me and Ozzy, but we both had great shows. And all these years, you know, I've done, you know, three albums with Tony, I've done Depth Sessions, Fuse, I've done Seven Star. I don't really remember much about that. And um don't really remember too much about it being in Sabbath. It really wasn't something I remember because it wasn't for me. I yeah. wanted to help Tony out. And unfortunately, I didn't do it justice because that just wasn't the vehicle for me. I wanted it to be Tony's love as it was his life. We love each other and I love him dearly. And I love all of Sabbath fans. Thank you so much for your peace and love. Giza Butler is a friend of mine. Our wives are best friends in Los Angeles. He lives there in every show in the villa where he's like, <laughs> <laughs> and when they lose, you can't speak to them. But <laughs> that's about it, you know. I love Sabbath, I love their fans, and I love rock and roll. And it's a wonderful year to be a part of it all, isn't it? It's a wonderful year for, for any rock fan in our generation. The, the youngs, the mid-ground. Rock and roll will never die. Unfortunately, rap music is, is kind of taken over. And, and bless all the rap performers, they have no problem with any form of music coming into our lives. But I am a fucking rock star from that era, and I'm going to continue that way. I'm not going to make a country album anytime soon. No, no. <laughs> well, maybe, you don't know. Um, not, not this week. I, 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 I have done a Billy Ray Cyrus album, I'm sorry, but he's one of my best mates. Well, there you go. You've got to do a few pals over there. Stone Dead Festival. Let's talk about that. It's going back to the original Monsters of Rock ethos. Yeah. What a great, great platform for rock and roll. How much are you looking forward to playing for us tonight? If you only knew, so it better be good. I told my manager that this should be the only festival I do in the UK. He'd won a couple of weeks ago, but this one, it was great, the new day, really great. So as you know, 
own turf for me, you know, East Midlands, West Midlands. And it's like, I flew over 24 hours ago. I'm going to fly over straight after the show back home. Okay. I want people to know how proud I am to be British. Although I'm an American citizen, I love this country. We're going through shit times at the moment, both sides of the Atlantic. I'm here to give my message of love and peace and music. Rock and roll will never die as long as I've got breath in these lungs. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You, Adam. Adam.